Today, we're going to talk about how to enable AI code style assist either in a chat window or in a tab based a tab autocomplete uh, in Visual Studio Code. And the interesting thing about this, we're going to do this with large language models running locally. Why would I want to run a large language model locally to do this? I mean, it's kind of expensive. You got to have enough of a video card or you got to have a Mac with like 32 gig or more. And so why would I want to do that? Two reasons. I don't want my data to leave my network and I forget to turn crap off and I don't want to pay for a metered service because then I'll get charged for it because I forgot to turn something off, right? Or I wasn't paying attention. But you could still do that. There are a bunch of good deals out there on various tools and actually what people are charging for Copilot or other tools isn't that crazy expensive, but I hate having subscriptions. So I'll spend more on a video card so that I can do what I want with it later, right? And so how did, let me give a, actually, you know what? So the way this works, right, is you have a Visual Studio extension and here are two of the ones that work for this and you could also use uh, Microsoft Copilot, right? So you have Visual Studio with a Visual Studio extension and if it's AI Copilot, the Visual, Visual Studio extension is plugged into the, the AI Copilot model. Um, the other way you could do that is you can plug that into a local LM Studio or an Alama, and they basically are API. Uh, it's not really open API, but I left that in there. Uh, they have some API that the uh, plugin knows how to talk to and talk to these models, right? And so we could run those locally. We could uh, deploy. Uh, models into containers uh, locally, or we could do it on another box in our network. Or we could have a cloud instance. Um, we could do, I actually have been playing with AI workstations, so I can deploy models in AI workstation in Docker I mean, or uh, whatever the other ones it supports uh, locally or remote. Um, and so it just kind of depends. In this case here, I'm going to run it in Olama. I think it's kind of a cool thing. And we basically based on the amount of video memory. So if I have a Visual Studio extension, like the one I'm going to use, uh, basically you have two kinds of uh, AI code assist that happen. One is chat and the other is tab autocomplete. So chat is basically you go to another window where you highlight text and you put it into a chat window and it's normal prompt based. Um, a large language model kind of interaction. It's really cool. Um, I'm super lazy, so I tend to use tab autocomplete. I just start typing kind of what I think I'm going to do, and it helps me out based on what's in the file and what's in the near file, other files. And you got to have an embedding model. And so basically, the Visual Studio extensions um, support all three. Now, chat has its advantages because you can do things like write me a test that does a widget test that pushes a button and checks if the button got pushed, right? Something like that. And you can do that in chat, whereas tab autocomplete, you kind of got to have some code that kind of does already what you want to do, um, or it'll just kind of fill in. Anyway, so those are the three. Now, locally, it's really expensive to run three models. Um, I have one video card that can run really big models for that not big, but medium sized models for what I want to do with that works really well. Um, on my Mac, I've got like 32 gigs. So I, you know, that works pretty well. Uh, and I have an eight gig card somewhere and that really can only one run model in the embedding. The embedding is only a couple hundred meg in the chat. I can run like a seven or eight gig almost in that card. So it kind of depends. So if you got smaller cards, right? Um, one of the things you can do, uh, at, or you're using LM Studio, because LM Studio will cough up an embedding model and it would also cough up a single LLM. So you can either do that, but if you don't have a small video card, uh, you end up in the same boat. So the autocomplete and the chat, large language models tend to be the same. Sometimes it's better for those to be different because they behave differently. Um, matter of fact, if you use a chat for tab autocomplete in uh, like an Olama, um, or actually none of them, when you go to actually chat, it'll be like, uh, the, the plugin will actually say, Hey, this model's not good for chat. You picked a not, you know, you picked one that's good for like tab autocomplete. Okay. So that's what that is. Oh, four minutes. We're going to run out of time here. Okay. So, uh, the two that I really have been using a bunch is Olama, O L L A M A. And I think it's cool because it actually can cough up. Mo it's actually a model management system that you can query by API, which I think is really slick. And the other one I've been using is um, LM Studio because it's really sweet, got a nice user interface, coughs up a model, and it coughs up an embedding at the same time. So it can do two. Um, and Olama's in pre release on Windows. And so that's what I started first. All right. So, real quick, uh, you know what? Let me pull this up. So, Hey, I've got, um, I can do Olama. Well, you know what? First thing, NVIDIA SMI. All right, no model loaded, GPU memory 738 meg. This card isn't actually driving a display. I have onboard video for that. That's cool. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can say, hey, Olama 
PS, no models are running. Olama LS, those are the models that are available. Let's do a chat session and we'll see what happens. Um, and you can see here that I'm running an old style large card, uh, but it run, I, the, I, the blog articles I did were all with Nate Gig. Okay, so let me pull this up, what we can look at. So you can see here that Olama actually can cough up a bunch of different models that are in its catalog. I all pulled those down with Olama, P, uh, Olama pull file. It looks a lot like a Docker, right? Because I did Olama PS and Odama LS, and that feels like Docker, like a Docker interface. Okay, so if here I've got a chat window on the right-hand side. We're going to be able to type here. This is a some random project of mine. Um, and I was going to show code complete, but we're not going to have time because we're at six minutes. So I can say, uh, write me a Dart unit test to do, and this really should be Flutter, uh, button press widget verify the button. I don't know. I'm making this up. All right. So what's going to happen here? is, I don't know what model I just picked. I guess we'll find out in a minute. So uh, is it's off processing that, right? And in theory, if I, well, you know what? Okay, so here we go. So that actually had to load the model, right? So this is actually showing me how to write a Dart test um, that verifies a button press, all right? And you can see that it scrolls off down here. So let's cancel that. And let's, uh, that model's already loaded. Right. So if we were to, oh man, somewhere here, there's a clear button. Anyway, you know, oh, new session. Okay. So we're going to start over in a minute. What I want to show real quick is we can do Olama PS, and you can see a model's been loaded. It's 14 gig. This is a really big model. Uh, and I can get away with that because I have a 20 gig card here, uh, old uh, RTX, Titan RTX, which is Turing. Um, and it's still good enough to do lots of cool stuff. And it's got lots of video memory. And, um, and it, you know, I got it used. Anyway, okay, so that looks really cool, right? And so now let's run that thing again real quick. Let's say uh, generate a unit test for Flutter that verifies button was pressed. So like I said, this thing, what had happened before? We had to actually load the model. And so you can see it's really fast, right? The model's loaded now and the model will stay loaded for 15 minutes. And now I can do all this kind of copy and paste stuff. You can also do stuff like, um, oh man, what was it? It was control I, no, control L. Yeah, so you can actually highlight text in the text window here and copy, it'll automatically put it in the prompt, you know, uh, how do I check for files in a directory, right? And there you go. So this is actually doing LS. It knows it's a bash, so it just kind of did. I should have said write a script. That's pretty bad. Uh, but you get the idea, right? We're running up on eight minutes. So now, um, again, like I said before, if we <clears throat> we have that one model loaded, if I do an autocomplete, it'll actually load a second model. I'm not sure why it didn't do the embeddings here. I'll have to look and see what I did wrong. Um, so that's what we got, right? Um, and what did I show? I showed that, hey, you can have a Visual Studio extension. You can pick a model. You can actually decide, if you, depending on whether you're using Olama or LM Studio um, and how much video memory you've got, you can either do this or you can actually point them at the same one. We looked at Olama a little bit. We looked at LM Studio a little bit. And it turns out I'm out of time. So I can point you at this blog article, which is really cool. And this other blog article by that Joe guy and yet another blog article by Joe guy. And I hope this is useful to you. Um, and if you want something in more detail, maybe I can do that around the config. I'll do another video later.